Okay, I'm working on a 2005 Buick LaCrosse with a 3800 engine. And what we're dealing with with this car is a large EVAP leak. So I'm going to take you to the scan tool next. All right, let me get you guys a shot of the trouble codes. Just go into my codes menu, display codes, and we'll go history. You see our EVAP large leak. That's PO455. And we'll go current, make sure there's no other codes too. Yep, only code in memory is our large leak. And what I like to do with these systems, in particular GMs, because GMs are known for vent solenoids that will stick open and will cause a large leak code. What I like to do first is go to my functional tests and go to my output controls. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this EVAP vent solenoid on and off. And I'm, gonna, I'm going to listen for a click. And I'm pretty sure the camera is not going to pick it up, but uh, it is under the car in the right rear, left rear wheel well area behind the rear tire. And I'm just coming up here to the top of the screen. And I'm not looking at any of the data here. I'm just using this on off function up top. So I'm just going to click on and off. I'll do this a few times without talking. I hear no sound whatsoever. So before I break out the smoke machine and put smoke in the system and look for a leak, the first thing I'm going to do, because I don't hear this solenoid turning on and off, I'm going to go underneath and check it electrically. And I'll be using the scan tool. I'll, I'll drag the scan tool back with me and I'll command it on and off while I'm doing voltage measurements on the solenoid itself. Okay, what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to use the Varus for my testing too, as well as turning the solenoid on and off. So you see I have my multimeter leads on the top here. And what I'm going to do is configure this, this tool so I can do it while looking at both screens. And this is a little bit tricky to do. So what I'm going to do first is hit my home tab, go to my component test meter. I have to go there to do the double screens. And it really doesn't matter what I pick as long as it is a voltage scale. So if you think about different sensors, are we measuring current? Are we measuring voltage? Uh, I'm just going to pick an engine coolant temp sensor, DC voltage test, and view meter. And I can adjust the scales from here. So I'm not really worried about the presets. <clears throat> Hit the meter tab up top and then hit the meter tab again, separate window shows up. Now what I can do with that is I can maximize that. Let's adjust the scales. We'll go to a 20 volt because we're dealing with a solenoid. Five second screen is perfect for what we're doing. And uh, now what I can do is minimize this. Go back to my home tab back to my scan tool, there's my scanner, and then show my desktop here. And here is my separate scope window. And that's the one we want. Actually, I like the voltage one here too, so we can do those at the same time. Now, it'll bounce back and forth. I can minimize or adjust the screens um, do I want to do that? I don't think so. You know what? It's not a big deal to just bring the scope back up when I do on and off here. I'll just do it that way this time. So looking at this with the circuit off, going underneath, knowing circuit design is important here. This is a ground side switch solenoid. How do I know that? Years of doing General Motors vehicles, they're all ground side switched on the EVAP systems. So what should I, I should have right now with the circuit off, I should have two 12 volt readings on the two wires at the solenoid. So going underneath. Okay, going underneath to do this first measurement. Behind the left rear tire, there's my vent solenoid right here. And what I'm going to do is two voltage measurements. And the first thing we need to do is find a good ground under this vehicle. And uh, you know, here in the Rust Belt of PA, I've said this many times. 
it is difficult to find good grounds under a, under a vehicle here. So the first thing that we want to do is take a measurement. And if we don't have a voltage reading, we don't want to panic and start chasing the system yet. What we want to do is to check that ground over there. So just going to go after this orange wire first. And come under here so I can see. And yes, we have 12 volts, looks like 11, 1198 on that wire. So we have our feed for sure. And what this also means, guys, is this ground is good. All right, so moving on to the next wire, the white wire. We should have 12 on that one too. And we do, 1198. That should be my control wire. So when I turn this solenoid on, this voltage should drop on this circuit. You see it did right there, turn it off. Voltage rises again, turn it back on. Voltage is dropping, turn it off. Voltage is rising. So you see the computer is clearly controlling this solenoid, we do not have a control issue. The solenoid is not clicking. So it is, right now this is suggesting the solenoid is stuck. There's one more check that I need to do electrically and that is to make sure that I'm not dropping the feed voltage when I'm turning the ground on. So when I'm, when I'm giving this a ground and we're dropping voltage here, let's make sure we don't have a voltage drop on the feed circuit and it's easy to do. I just need to move my pin back over, check my voltage on the feed while I'm turning the solenoid on, and that will prove that my feed is good. So I'm just going, going to move that back. Okay, back on the feed wire. And this is the circuit off, so this is static voltage right now, and it's really not accurate unless the circuit's loaded. I've said this many times. So we want to load the circuit, turn this on, make sure with the solenoid on that we're maintaining voltage. You see a little drop right there. Uh, I actually like to see that because what that suggests to me is there is actually some current flow taking place in this solenoid. So that could be another way to verify circuit integrity would be to do an amperage measurement, put an amp clamp around those wires while you're doing the solenoid on off test with the computer. Not necessary in this case, guys. I have a good feed. That's circuit on, loaded circuit, maintaining 11.8 volts, no problem there at all. Nothing wrong with the wiring to this solenoid. This solenoid is stuck. Uh, I think the next thing that I would like to show is unsticking it, so I'm actually just going to smack on it and uh, see if I can make that unstick. So we'll Let's see, we'll turn it on. I'll leave the solenoid on electrically while I'm underneath tapping on it. I need a wrench or something here. Anything really. All right. Let's see, Let's see if I can unstick this thing. See if that did it. Just doing a sound test here. No, not at all. Okay. All right, there's one final thing that I need to do to make sure we don't have any other leaks in this system is I'm going to pinch this vent line off and put uh, my smoke machine on this vehicle and make sure that I don't have any leaks anywhere else in the system. And that'll really be my final test. No other checks are needed for the vent. I mean, what we could do is I could take this line off here, and I'm not going to. But for those of you that want to check these, you can take this line off right here, put a 
extension hose on there, you can blow on it. These are normally open. These vent solenoids are normally open. Then what you can do is energize the solenoid and you can check for flow changes. So you should be able to blow through it when you're not energized and when you energize it, you should not be able to blow through it. And uh, I know some of you don't have a scan tool with bi-directional controls, but if you remember, I've talked about power ground side switching section three in my book, you can refer to that and what you can do knowing how to energize a solenoid, you could take a test light to ground and energize the solenoid. Uh, you know, there's variables to that too, as far as test light current and solenoid current, things like that, that I have listed in there in section three for you guys that are following along. But you can manually energize these solenoids, check them the same way that I am. Solenoid is stuck, and I'm going to, uh, again, go up front and put smoke in the system and, and really show you that too. That'll be a good visual for you guys instead of blowing through it. So I'll do that first. Smoke up front, I'll show you the smoke pouring out of here. I'll energize the solenoid and show you that I can't make the smoke stop. You know, telling you again the solenoid is sticking. And uh, then what I'll do is I'll pinch this off and make sure we don't have any other leaks in the system. Okay, shot under the hood of where I'm connected. Uh, right at this purge solenoid, GM has provided me a access port or a test port and uh, just have my smoke machine going into there. We'll come over to the machine now. What we're looking for here, really what we want to pay attention to is this, this ball that's on the side right here. And let me get you a shot of that. Like before we would ever put smoke into a EVAP system, we really want to pay attention to this ball. And I guess we'll I'll have to do another video really exclusively on this, but I can show you quickly things that I, I do, things I look for. <clears throat> so if I was beginning a EVAP leak test, before I would even turn the smoke on on the machine, I have air going in the system right now, and uh, which by the way, is a safety issue too with some of these tools. Guys, I'm using compressed shop air, it's oxygen. We're putting oxygen in the fuel tank. Um, so now we have oxygen and fuel. It's, it's a, not a good combination. You want to make sure nobody's welding or doing anything around you related to sparks. Um, this is why EVAP systems, you really should be using compressed nitrogen when you do this. So um, just keep that in mind, safety here. But this, this ball that's on top, what I'll do first is I will... Uh, pinch this line off right here and when I do that what that does is that eliminates any flow from the tool now my ball sticks up here if you watch that ball wow, it's really sticking bad right now I had this out in the cold I'm going to have to take that out and clean it ah, that sucks okay there we go all right, see that ball dropping. Hopefully it's showing up in the camera. Um, so with me pinching this line off, what I'm showing is there's no flow. So if you get a ball that drops all the way at the bottom, then there's no leaks in the system. Don't bother putting smoke in it. That's the point of this test. But I'm going to use this also to tell me that I have no other leaks in the system. So if I let this go, you see that ball go back to the top. What that's telling me is we have a huge leak right now occurring. Now, of course we do because the vent solenoids open. Every car, you guys need to remember this too, every system has some type of normally open vent that needs to be closed when you do smoke tests. So you guys saw me do it already. I'm gonna go back and turn the solenoid on. Okay, I just turned the solenoid on. Come back up here. And then what we would do is we'd wait for the system to fill with uh, this thing. This tool puts, I think, maybe one and a half pounds of pressure into the system. It has a real good regulator on it. And we don't want to overpressurize the system. No danger with this tool for that. But what we would do is we'd watch this ball and it should continue to drop and drop and drop. If that system is sealed, if you close the vent, that's what should happen. I'll keep you focused on the ball. If I pinch this line off, that, ball's, that ball should drop. And right now I'm pinching it hard. You see it dropping. 
I let it go. Huge leak still in the system, which we know now is the vent solenoid. Um, I'll show you the smoke back there now. So we'll turn this on. Red light indicates smoke. We'll give it uh, a minute here, and I'll crawl underneath and show you the smoke pouring out of that vent. Right now, again, the solenoid is energized, meaning it should be closed. Uh, it is a normally open solenoid, so with the solenoid off, it is open, and with the solenoid on, it is closed. The solenoid is energized right now. It should be closed. It's not. It is stuck. Now, oh, that may be long enough. Let me go back, take a look, see if I see smoke yet. Starting to. It's going to be tough to pick up on camera sometimes. You really have to get the light a certain way. There it is. Right here. So again, you see the smoke pouring out of the solenoid, proving what I said, solenoid stuck open. Last thing, I'm gonna pinch this line off. Well, you can really see the smoke now, pouring out of that vent. Okay, I'm gonna pinch this line off. Solenoid is still on. And if we have no other leaks in this system, we can shut this smoke off now. If we have no other leaks in this system, this ball should start dropping. I'll keep you focused on that. And it does stick on me. So I usually keep checking it by pinching that, that line off. let that go now looks like we're dropping this is what we want to see usually takes a minute for the system to fill up so don't be in a hurry when you do this and I'm always checking it by pinching this line again this is a this is pinched off this so it's stuck there we go now it's unpinched this is what's actually flowing in the system right now. I want to see this ball drop all the way down. Because what we don't want to do is we don't want to put a vent solenoid in this, which we know we need, and then have another leak somewhere. And what this is looking like right now is we have another leak somewhere. This is why we do this. Because that ball should drop all the way down, and it's not. But again, we don't panic. We wait. That ball is not sticking right now. But it is slowly dropping more and more. You guys can see that. So I'm thinking maybe we're, we're okay here. Let's just... I'm just not being paid. I'm just not being patient enough. Just above point one, I still don't like that. Let's keep watching it for another minute. I think we're going to be okay here. It's taking longer than a typical system to fill up. I want that ball to sit all the way down there. If it does. We'll be done, put a vent solenoid in this, and we'll know the check engine light's not going to come back on for any type of EVAP leak. But this is what I do before I do any smoke test on a vehicle. Check this meter. If that ball is sitting all the way at the bottom, you have no business putting smoke in the system. You're not going to find one. There's no leak. Looks like this ball might be sticking on me a little bit again here. 
So pinch this off. We know we don't have flow at all. You see that ball is still hanging there. And it shouldn't be. It should be all the way at the bottom. I need to... I need to clean this thing. Uh, it uses uh, mineral oil as its, uh, as its fluid, and, and we get oil in here. What I can do is take this off the top, this little screw, and I can clean that out with brake clean. But you see that thing is sitting at the bottom now. So there's with it, that's with it pinched all the way off. Let it go. You see we're sitting at the bottom. I think it may be stuck just a hair. But I'm, I'm comfortable with this, guys. There is no other leaks in this system. No question about it. We put a vent solenoid in this car. It's going to take care of this problem. So one last comment. Again, with these, with these machines, guys, you're better off using compressed nitrogen safety, you know, using compressed air from a regular air compressor. You know, we're putting oxygen in the tank. You know, just make sure if you're using one of these guys that you're careful Think about what you're doing. Make sure nobody around you is doing anything related to sparks at all. Final thought, don't forget to take your vice grips off the vent line because if you forget what will happen, the customer will not be able to fill his tank. And really that kind of gives you an idea why these vent solenoids are normally open. You got to fill the tank. We need somewhere for those additional pressures to go. It filters through the canister first. And uh, that has to be open. So don't forget to take those off.